In an earlier video, we configured a generic Windows 7 virtual machine that is going to form the base of our SOE. So what this is, standard Windows 7, and you may recall we installed the VMware tools on it. So there's VMware tools. Now we need to start installing any applications that you would like to have as part of your golden image SOE. So if you've ever installed or configured a, a SOE before, it's the same process. Now I have a server, again my Bastion host in my network that has a whole bunch of my programs on it. So I'm just going to log on to that box. So here's my software share. This box isn't on the domain by the way, so sometimes it'll ask you for some passwords. So what I might do is install, uh, I've got Chrome, let's install Google Chrome. And this is just standard software installation. Don't you hate it when people are watching and you can't type properly? Okay. So Chrome's installed. There's that. Kill that off. Um, you can install pretty much anything you want. I might install OpenOffice just to give you guys a bit of a taste of things we can do later on. So I'll grab that. This is where you would install any other office suites or, or software that's specific to your environment. I like to keep it pretty simple. Um, if you are going to be doing demos with the office suite, you want to make sure you've got uh, that off your MSDN account or your volume license account. What else? I've got 7-zip. Just a whole bunch of different utilities. Often it's just stuff that I use in my labs that I throw onto the SOE just so I can show people how all this works. So we'll let that install. It's probably enough for now. I think you guys are getting the point. The next step is to install the agents inside of the Citrix server. So the agents are the components that will basically talk back to our connection server and orchestrate a lot of the configuration and setup of the client machine. So I'm going to go back to that ISO I downloaded from Citrix, go back to that main menu that we used to install the original delivery controller. Just be a little patient, it can take some time to load up. Again, I think this will do automatic detection of the operating system and change some of the choices I get, but it's a pretty straightforward process. So let's get this installed, I want to run it. Okay, so we want to do Zen Desktop, hit start, and notice how everything's grayed out except for the virtual delivery agent for Windows Desktop OS. So again, this is the agent that's going to talk to the uh, configuration or the uh, connection server and orchestrate all the things. So let's run that. Yes. So we're going to create a master image. We're going to just install the standard agent. If you're doing 3D rendering, GPU acceleration, that's when you can start using the HDX 3D. That will certainly be a different lab. Uh, that's a little bit trickier. So let's stick with the standard VDA. Let's install. It'll install the Citrix receiver as well. That's fine. Let's let's do that. Now, how do you want the uh, how do you want to enter the location of your delivery controller? So remembering my delivery controller is that original server that I'm talking to. I'll flick back to my one here. It's this guy here. So I need to make sure that this box, my Windows 7 machine, can talk to it. So the host name is lab.ctx.01.ntnx.local. I'm going to hit test. I get a tick. Hit add. So just to recap, this is how the Zen desktop Windows 7 virtual machine knows to phone home. It's going to phone back to that delivery controller, we want to make sure it can see it. So we're going to do a manual enter of our controller's DNS name. I'll just leave these as, disk, as default, leave these as default, and hit next. And this is going to go off and install all the runtimes. It's pretty good. They installed all the frameworks, all the runtimes, everything for us. It's, it's really, really straightforward.
So we'll leave this alone to run. It doesn't take too long. So this is a good sign. Machine needs to restart, so we'll hit close. Machine's gonna bounce. It's kind of funky actually what it does when it comes back. It may ask for network credentials if it doesn't have access to the location that you are installing the software from, by the way. I didn't do it here, but uh, sometimes it's a good idea to copy this stuff locally. Sometimes it doesn't matter. So let's see what it does. So this is where it's looking for the original media. So I'll just point it back to those files. This only happens if you're installing off a network share, so you want to avoid this. Just uh, copy the files local. So the machine's now rebooted, it's got the uh, correct agent on it. It's going to log in. You can see here it's uh, got the open office staff, Google Chrome. That's all your users will see. They, they won't see too much different. There's a Citrix receiver, but that's pretty much it. So for now, I'm just going to shut this machine down. And we're going to use this in the uh, next section when we start creating some virtual machines. Getting pretty close now, this is good.